Shut up and sit down. Boom. Hello, everybody. I'm the Street Certified Dope Doctor here with you. This is the Couch Live. Actually, it's Dope and Dharma with the Couch Live edition of Dope and Dharma. Um, I'm here with my partner, the Dharma guy, Trinity Phillips. What's up, brother? Hey, hey what is up? Good, man. Here on uh, WOKB 1680 AM in uh, the Central Florida area. And of course, 100.7 FM if you local to the central florida area if you're not you're probably watching us some other way and how might they be watching us trinity or listening uh yeah you can watch us on uh f- right now it's uh facebook youtube and twitch live under dope and dharma and then if you want to check us out at any time you can do so through uh any of those mediums or on any of your major podcasting platforms that's right but uh for all the central floridians we're here at wokb with you and of course uh you know I, as much as you and i want to talk about football today we just can't. We got to talk about something else, Trinity. I mean, That's I know right. you and I just want to talk football. Matter of fact, instead of doing a pregame show, we just did pregame. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. we just talked football for the last, what, 30 minutes when we were, yeah. you know, getting ready for this. So we didn't, uh, we did our usual non non prep and just talked football. So, <laughs> so before we get into new beginnings and the reason we do the Couch Live, because the Couch Live is a show on addiction and Zoom recovery that we've done for what, since 1999? The- Couch Live has been on the air. Thank you all for joining us all these years. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, we have other shows that we do. We do, But we do a sports show sometimes. Every once in a while, Dope and Dharma does a sports show. And, and we almost wanted to do one today. But, you know, we couldn't turn that into WOKB. <laughs> no. They, they would have been, they been like, well, this is not what we asked <laughs> yeah. you to do. It's not yeah. what we wanted. Right? Even though I'm sure, I'm sure they'd like to talk about football, too, though. Oh, I'm guaranteed that I'm sure to- Shaw would like to talk about football. Sure. What 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 show do you think is Shaw's favorite team? Which you one? Do he's I think a Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he's, well, a Jacksonville. Isn't he, he's a Chicago boy, so I would assume. Oh, the ah, well, tell him thank you for Fields and the Steelers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do with Fields what you couldn't do, and uh, you're gonna and and you're not gonna do as well with Caleb as you thought you were gonna do. Not of yesterday was any indication. Apparently. But uh, but that's a great transition because we're talking about new beginnings today, new beginnings. And do you think that Chicago Bears have a new beginning with Caleb? And do you think the Pittsburgh Steelers have a new beginning with Justin Fields or Russell Wilson? And, uh, you know, I prefer Fields. But uh, either one, you think we have a new beginning? Well, they're all new beginnings, whether they're worth it or not. Eh, Who knows? To be determined. Right. So why are we talking about it today? You know why, people? Because, you know, sometimes you just got to get off the road you're on. That's why I wanted to talk about this today, because sometimes you're on a on, on a certain path and you're just so used to being on it. And you're just so accustomed to what comes with it that no matter how bad it may be for you, you just stay on it, you know, for, for whatever reason. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. And we're going to talk about some of those reasons today, Trinity. I would like you, the Dharma guy, to share with us some of the reasons that people stay on the path that they're on, even though it's not working for them, Trinity, even though like they, they're coming up against some sort of resistance or it's not getting them the fruits that they're looking for they stay on it you know sure so i want i want i want to hear some of those reasons that you think people have for staying on paths that appear to just be going nowhere uh yeah i mean the first things that come to my mind are, are obviously uh denial right like mm-hmm. refusing to believe or accept the fact that it's not working for you <laughs> it's not working yeah um the other one i think that comes to mind is fear Right, fear of the unknown, right? Fear of making any actual changes, right? Um, and then the other big one I would think of, probably since we're doing things in threes, um, mm-hmm. would probably uh be the um, oh my god, my brain just fried in there. I saw Marissa's comment and I, I yeah. adjusted. What's up, Marissa? Hey, Marissa. New York. Um, oh, complacency, there we go, just being comfortable, right? So, yeah, um, you know, adapting to a situation. And then you kind of become adapted where it becomes your new normal. Um, I think we're all guilty of that to some degree. So let me ask you a little bit about that. Being comfortable, sure. being uncomfortable. Why, why, why is it so many people just comfortable staying uncomfortable, Trinity? Well, what is it? Uh, water seeks to level itself, I guess, right? So we're very similar in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, we're creatures of laziness. So we're always going to try to find the least, you know, the least effort way to get through something. That's kind of how we're wired. Right. Um, 
and, and when it's good, it's great. But when it's not, it, it really is to our detriment. And, and so I think that, for instance, like when I was doing my health and fitness stuff, um, people would look at somebody who is morbidly obese and just really not doing well. And a lot of people would be like, well, oh, man, I would never, you know, be able to do that. But right. They don't realize is that person didn't go to bed at night, you know, in a healthy body and wake up mm. the next Like it was a gradual thing. So like I had clients who adjusted their life as they're like, cause you don't have a choice, right? Like you can't just not adjust. You have to make it through the day. So well, some people, it looks like they don't adjust Trinity. So I don't, I don't know if I can buy into that. What I'm getting people look to be stagnant all the well, time. What I'm getting to that one is like, uh, you know, if you're gaining weight, right. And your, your clothes don't oh. fit. Oh, you are just to the, to the negative. Part. You're going to have to, you're going to have to buy new clothes. <laughs> yeah, like you can't right. just go out naked. Like you're going to adjust. Right. Right. So you're going to keep making these little adjustments. And then right. the next thing you know, you look back years and years later and you're, you're putting your shoes on with a special apparatus because you can't bend down to do it anymore. Like you didn't go to bed Monday, wake up Tuesday, can't put your shoes on. Right. Like that's right. not how that happened. Right. You made these little tiny adjustments to get through the day until, you know, years later, you, you've basically accustomed yourself to a, a really bad life. So, so much like a, a, a person last week may have been sleeping in a very comfortable bed with his wife. And then he, you know, because of the a, 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 alcohol or something similar, now he's sleeping on his boy's couch and, yeah. and you know, and spending time differently. You adjust. Yeah. yeah right? I think that's what we do is adjust. Like we, you know, because right. uh, the alternative is not going forward. Right. And that's a whole different right. show. Right. So as humans, we're going to, you know, do what we got to do to make it through the day. So right. if that means that I have to adjust now to this new negative, right? yeah, it's not good for me. Yeah, I don't like it, but what are you going to do? You know, so you kind of get by. Yeah. And then that becomes your new normal. And the next thing you know, you've adjusted to things that you never thought in a million right. years. Like, come on, man, you've been doing this way longer than I have. But how I know myself. How many times I heard people saying that they once told themselves they would never use needles ever. Right. And, you know, they're sitting here talking to me because they've been using needles. So it's like we make adjustments, man. And, and right. it's never like it's never a zero to 60. Right. It just doesn't work that way. It's zero to like five and then five to 10 and then 10 to 12. Right. You, know, you make it the next thing you know, you make it to 60 eventually. And and, and, and to put it in full perspective, for those of you out there that, that, don't use or, or not the actual offender some of you have made the same adjustments like you said you would never live with someone who behaved a certain type of way and now you do you would never tolerate someone who treated you a certain type of way and now you do yep. um, so it happens all the way around it doesn't just yep. happen to the person that that has the specific issue it, it it's it, it like bleeds into the entire environment that they're in mm -hmm. so then everybody becomes infected with that same sickness. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's how people adjust to things that aren't good for them. I think it's a gradual thing and it sneaks up on you because you make excuses, right? You know, right. you, you, um, right. you know, uh, the, the person who's being hurt, Oh, well, mm -hmm. they didn't mean that, or they're struggling with something. That's not how mm -hmm. they normally act. You know, that's, mm -hmm. it's not who they are. I'm not going to judge them for this one thing. They've done all these other great, you know, they make excuses and, and next thing you know, you're putting up a behavior that you never thought in a million years you would deem acceptable. Right. right. Yeah. Like Mar Marissa from New York just put on Facebook live codependency. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is yeah. part of it, right? It's just that we become codependent with each other. I mean, even as friends, you, you get codependent with your friends, but they're your friends. Like you, you, you feel differently within that scenario, but when you're in a more intimate relationship, you would hope that you'd be a little bit more protective of who you're spending that much time with or dedicating sure. the rest of your life with. But, they become your drug. They become your using. Um, and you just can't, you can't put them down. You know, you walk sure. away, you say you're going to stay walking away, but then they call you on that right day, you yeah. know, or they reach out on that right day. And, and if you don't heal your own self, you just keep getting right back into it. And, and yeah, so, so this is about new beginnings because it's possible. And I think that a lot of times people stay in really bad situations, Trin Trinity, because they think it's impossible to get out of it, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, well, that's fear. That I was talking right, about. Right, right. And unfortunately, there's people out there that believe that's a reality. It may it may sound like a fear, but it's a reality. You know, whether it be a financial, it, it appears to be a financial reality or it appears to be, you know, something else. Um, cheaper to keep her. <laughs> yeah. Or him. <laughs> you know. It didn't uh, rhyme though. It really doesn't. 
We got to we got to figure that one out. Yeah, like happy wife, happy life. I've always been trying to figure out one for happy husband. You know, happy, happy spouse, happy, happy house. Man. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess I can go with that. All right. I, I was thinking more like happy man than you can. You know what I mean? Because I like to say no a lot. You know, what I mean? it's, it's like if he, if if I'm happy, then you can. I mean, sure. Just, you know, learn how to make me smile more. <laughs> just right. You know. Uh, she'll come in here, throw a shoe at me or something if I keep going. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's like, the fear that I was talking about. Like the, between the three was delusion, fear, and yeah. um, you know, complacency, I guess. But yeah. the fear is another it's a real thing, man. Like you know, it's from the outside looking in, obviously everything always sounds so simple. Right. Oh, I just do this, you know. But when you're in it, sometimes that fear mm -hmm. is is mm -hmm. is contrived for sure, but other right. times it's very real, right? Like if somebody is in the same in an unhappy situation, right. And let's say they are broke, you right. know, and it's a very real thing that you can't afford to, right. to walk away at the moment. Like I completely understand that. Yeah. Um, it's easy for me on the outside looking in, I'm not going to have to wake up in a situation where I don't have a place to lay my head tomorrow. Right. So I can tell you all day long, well, it's not that hard. You know, you got to do what's good for you. But the person who's hearing it might be like, yeah, well, you know, I want food in my belly and I want a, a house to sleep in tonight. So right. I guess I'm going to deal with what I got to deal with. Um, and so the fear of the unknown, the fear of making the changes, the fear of what if, what could, yeah. um, and even that, I think that's something everybody has to really kind of look inward to figure out what exactly are you willing to put up with and what you're not. Yeah. Fear can paralyze you. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. you, you, when you're afraid of something, sometimes you just do no movement until yeah. it's years later. And then it's like, well, now how can I start over? I mean, I, I should have done it back then. If I was going to start over, I should have done it then. Now, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know what tends to happen, Trinity, is that people, the, the other person tends to go build their own life, you know, and when they build their own life, they don't need you as much, but they're just so accustomed to you just being a screw up, for lack of a better word, that they just tolerate you or, yeah. but, but they, but they built a life without you. You know, they have their own friend group. They have their own social scenarios that going on. Uh, they don't require you for all the same things they used to require you. They've already now, you know, put you so down on the pedestal that they don't need anything or think anything of you. You're just part of the part of the furniture, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But they stay in the same, they stay in the situation anyway. And for the user, I mean, it's like sometimes you just don't even know you that there is another, like, am I going to enjoy it? Why, you know, I do this because I like to do this is who I am. You become you you take ownership of the illness to the point where you say, this yeah. is what yeah. I do. This is who I am. I drink. I get high. That's what I like to do. And, you know, the day that I don't like it anymore, somebody please shoot me because I don't want to live any other way. I mean, that there is there is something to be said for that kind of mentality. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, we oftentimes forget that like it's all learned behavior, right? Right. <laughs> like, you, you didn't come out at two years old acting that way. Like you, right. you learned to do that, you know, either through uh, uh, defensive, like you know, necessity or just whatever. You learn that behavior, and you learned it. You can unlearn it. Um, hmm. But too many times, yes, I think we we wrap ourselves around certain behaviors that we enjoy, and we right. kind of claim that that's just who we are, even though that's really not. Right. right. It, it's almost like, you know, like taking it back to, to and, and Marissa, I saw I saw your little comment right there. <laughs> People may not know that Marissa's in a wheelchair. So she, when I said that we're paralyzed about something else, she had a little comment. What'd she say right there, Trinity? Uh, she said, yep. Emotions and mentalities can paralyze you more than anything physically. That's, that's, a, that's a true statement. That's a very true statement. Paralysis um, by analysis. That, that's right. Um, so, you know, one of the, one of the issues with, uh, with people getting stuck in a certain situation and feeling like they can't, you know, change paths besides not really wanting to change paths is, you know, you, you, it becomes internally like who you are. So we were talking football earlier, right? And, and when you watch football, you, you tend to watch uh, people do interviews, right? And sometimes the interview, however you watch that interview, that, can make you either like a player or dislike a player. I'm going to say a lot of times, right? I mean, sure. you and I, you know, we, we like some of the same players and then there's certain players that, that we have issue with based on interviewing skills, based on the way their personality doesn't come across or does come across, unfortunately too much. Cam Newton on an interview. Yeah. And so 
it's it's almost the same thing like when you start using at a very young age it already starts changing who you are like i you know i've said many times i don't know who i would have been if i wouldn't have made some of the choices that i made so early on in my life i just don't even know what kind of person i would have been i just don't my best way of kind of even looking at that trinity to be honest with you is looking at my daughters and kind of like looking at their skill sets and, and kind of looking at the way they manage the world and said, and I think to myself, is that, is that how I would have been minus the traumatic stuff or minus some of these decisions that I made? Is that, is that my brain without any influence of, of marijuana, cocaine, uh, violence, uh, criminality, you know, is that, is that where my brain would have been? um like that i think of things like that do you do you ever ponder stuff like that i mean you have children i mean do you ever ponder that you know because you know why you are the way you are i mean it's no sure. secret your dad left at a very young age and you so that obviously affects you i mean you know you can anyone can think oh that had nothing you know that didn't change me i am who i am no that affects you it traumatizes sure. you and however you respond to that trauma event that traumatic event that becomes who you are. So do you ever look at your kids and say, man, what what could have been different for me? Should I have had the fatherly love that I know you give your kids? I've seen you do fatherly stuff to your kids that I know you didn't learn from your father. <laughs> so you right. I mean, your dad wasn't even around. Well, he was. He was long. He was around long enough to do damage. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. That's yeah. Fair. No, I mean, all the time. Um, you know, that's a that's actually a huge motivating factor for me, actually, is is. I don't want them like I want to um, uh, emphasize or, or celebrate or encourage like the the innocence and the love right. and the genuineness that my children still have. Mm. You know, I lost that innocence way before I was either one of their ages. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've you know, I've seen how it's impacted me in my life. In certain instances, I'm extremely grateful. I, right. I, I think there's certain survival things that I've picked up over the years that have right. been fantastic at survival. Um, not so good at, at building connection and relationships with people. It's definitely held me back in many, many areas. Right. And the older I get, the more I realize that. And then that's kind of where I start to look back and be like, dang, man, like had I had some of these skills that I've developed right. over the years earlier on, had they not been like robbed from me, mm. who would I have been and how would I have mm. turned out? Um, cause I look at my kids and they're just like, man, <laughs> I complain about them all. You know, they're, they're my kids they are annoying sometimes, but yeah. at the end of the day, they're good, good kids though. Yeah. And I look at like, like my son, man, my son, out of all the kids, my son is the, is the sweetest, nicest kid. Like he's the most loving, most compassionate, he's so loving, very like extremely. He is literally out of all the kids, like my, my daughters, like, you know, there's only two of them in the house now, yeah. but like my daughter, you know, she comes out in the living room, even since she was like a little kid, yeah. if I were to give her a cookie, the first thing she does is take the cookie, eat it and go about her day. <laughs> Towards my son. Even since he was little, I would give him a cookie and he would immediately ask if he can get one for his sisters and, you know, as everybody else in the house. That's just who he is. He's just been a very thoughtful, loving kid his whole life. Now, he, that, but because of that, that also makes him more volatile, right? Like when he does get hurt, then he lashes out. Like you can see the hurt and the pain coming out, you know, in a, in a very volatile way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I want to, I want to encourage that, that lovingness, you know, so I'm trying to teach him how to harness that and how to mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, keep with it. But like I lost that genuineness when I was a kid, right. like a long time ago. Right. Like I grew up just angry. Well, that's an example of changing paths a little bit. That's an example yeah. of new beginnings, because even though it may not be a new beginning in your own personal life, as far as from childhood to upward, you're changing the future. You're, you're changing sure. the way this bloodline was in Trying. some way determined to go. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, the deck, the deck was stacked against you. And there's a lot of people out there that can relate to that. You know, they, 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 matter of fact, they may use that as an excuse to be a poor parent or sure. use that as an excuse to be, you know, a certain type of way saying, well, you know, that's just it's a family tradition. You know, what I mean, this is, you sure. know, it's that's the way we all that's the way we are. Like they would use their last name with that. You know, that's just the, sure. the, the, the blankety blank way. You know what I mean? Whereas you, on the other hand it's improved your parental skills. And, and, you know, we've made note on this program that, you know, there's someone out there today that went to their kid's baseball game because their father never went to their baseball hmm. game. Well, there's, it's because of, or in spite of exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then there's some of you that don't go exactly because you don't even know how to be there 
because you think I don't need to be there. You know, I I didn't have that for me. You don't need that. He's good. Well, I, I mean, so as far as new beginnings, thankfully, um, I was wise enough Mm -hmm. back when I was 28, when I first found out I was going to have my first child. Um, I was Mm -hmm. wise enough then to realize that like, look, I need to make some changes. Like I need to, Mm -hmm. you know, I was happy with who I was. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to do that at 28 cause I was selfish. I didn't have right. kids. I didn't have a right. you know wife or anything. So I was able to be self-centered and kind of just me and aggressive mm-hmm. and mean, whatever it, it worked. Right. It was, I was successful. Yeah. Um, but the second I found out that I was having a child and it was going to be a daughter, I immediately right. knew that little girl needs to hear things like, I love you. I'm proud of you. Um, and those were like dirt. Uh, uh, oh I cannot express how dirty and just gross it made me feel to say things like i love you it was just weird um Mm. but i knew that my daughter is going to need that as a father so i i could have said well that's just not who i am that's not how i was raised or she'll get i got over it she'll get instead i was like no that's what she needs so i'm going to start implementing that now so i just i trained myself to get used to it now i can say it all the time doesn't bother me at all right um so uh, you know i I definitely was able to to grow and adapt And, and the reason why i did that new beginning is because I wanted my kids to have a new beginning. I didn't want them to start with the same cloud that I had. Right. Right. But, I mean, it wasn't easy. <laughs> well, no. Nah, and and does it does it somehow? I don't know. Resolve something within you though, by going through that, by 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 reliving it differently, or by being on the other side of that and providing differently. Does that somehow heal some of the crap that you endured? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I don't know. There was a lot of healing that took place just on my own throughout the years. Right. Um, so I, the I guess kids bring a different level of healing. <laughs> they do. Cause, cause uh, I, I know it does. It did with me, but I'm gonna let you answer that one first. And then, yeah. You know. Um, my, my kids definitely bring out a different emotion in me that I've never experienced before right. them. Right. Um, you know, I've always been a genuine person and I've always cared about people. Right. But there was arm's length kind of caring. Yeah. Right. Like I just, there wasn't a vulnerability there. Mm-hmm. Um, but they just completely wiped that away. <laughs> like I turned into such a baby when it comes to my kids, dude. Like right. I just love my kids, man. And they're the only humans on earth that like I think about when I'm not around them, kind of a thing. They're just um and, and so yeah, that definitely helped grow. Um, but I think being open to that has helped it grow, right? Because I could have very easily um ignored it or yeah. fought it, but I embraced it. Um and but watching them definitely makes me kind of rethink things. It, it motivates me more to kind of be there for them um, because of their innocence, because of where they're right. at. It, it That's why I'm able to do the uncomfortable things. Like if I did something that, that I felt justified in, for instance. Right. Um, but I know I kind of maybe went about it a little bit too aggressively or whatever. I will immediately apologize or, or, or own mm. it, that kind of stuff. Um, it's because of that. Th- those are the kinds of things that make me like... You- you didn't have apologize no before. I'm sorry. You didn't apologize before. Um, I, I did, unless I thought I was right. If I thought I was right and justified, <laughs> I thought I was right. <laughs> it, it, I mean, if I thought I was justified right. logically, then I didn't really care how I came off. I didn't care how it made you feel. Hey, that's right. on you. You know yeah. what I say is what I say. How you take it, how you take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when my kids, just like the other day, like right. you know, just the other morning, I was taking my daughter to school, and and her and I were having a conversation. Uh, the conversation was not like um it just turned into like a lecture. I think mm-hmm. as I was talking to her, I felt it the moment it shifted from conversation to lecture. And I could tell that, that I was being a little overzealous. Maybe it was just tired. I don't know what it was. I just, I could tell that it didn't come off the way I wanted it to. So uh, when she got out of the car, whatever, I immediately texted her. I was like, look, baby, right. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I apologize if it came off aggressive or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. I, I owned it and, 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 and apologized to her. Mm-hmm. And my main reason why is because I want her to know that, look, man, that's just not, you know the relationship that we need to have basically so that's pretty insightful of you see you know there's there's, there's a couple of words you use there right there vulnerability being mm-hmm. one of them and the other one uh well the other one you didn't say but i thought about it was honesty yeah. um, because i think you know first of all as much as i heal as much as i worked on healing prior to children i i feel like children took it to another level daughters especially i, yeah. I don't know what it would have been like if i would have had boys i i i, I think i'm pretty grateful um that i did not have the son that i wanted to have <laughs> yes uh because it would have probably been uh, i absolutely treat them differently but yeah, out of love different. but i definitely treat them differently 
I just don't think I would have changed as much with a boy. I think I would have stayed kind of rough and gruff. Whereas with a um, <clears throat> with the daughters, um, it softened me. It, it, mm-hmm. Put it this way. I think we all have a softness to us. I think I've said this many times before. We all have a hardness to us and we all have a softness to us. No matter what you are, you are what you are. You know, you can try to be as hard as you want to be, but if you're soft, you're soft. And if you try to be, if you're, if you're hard, hard, you can try to be soft, but you're, if you try to be soft, you're just hard, man. It's just who you are, but you need to, you need to get some therapy to get softer. Uh, but in, in my personal case, uh, it brought a level of, uh, vulnerability that I just, I wasn't expecting that a level of vulnerability to, to be open to being vulnerable, like to be at a level of honesty. Cause I, I just, I think from four years old, I was just a hustler, to be honest. I mean, I, I can go back so, even before my memories start. And I and I was always in a hustle, you know, four years old, five years. Old, I, I, I could I could think of all the different hustles that I did, starting from from stealing now and later to then selling them. You know what little t- I mean, I ditched kindergarten, bro. Who does that? Who ditches <laughs> kindergarten? You know what I mean? One of my mother's favorite stories is I came home with, you know, walking with a girl hand in hand from kindergarten because we just left out the wrong door and just decided not to go back to school that day. And, you know, little little things like that. Like, I was always like making excuses. I was always lying. I was always hustling. And when I had daughters, you know, and as much as I'd like to say when I met Dana, that changed. Uh, I was still holding a little back. But once I had daughters, I was like, there's no holding back here at all, yeah. you know, because I can hear again. I hear me and them. I see me and them. And, and it was like, ooh, wow. When I said that, this is where I was coming from. When I thought that this is where I was coming from. And so I just wanted to hear it different. I wanted to react to it different or respond. Let me say that. Let me respond to it differently because as good of a parents as I have, it's still a different generation of a world anyway. Yep. So with every new generation, there comes a different response to that same stimuli. You can't always respond the way the past generations responded because it's a different world. And so I listen differently. I explain things differently. I was just different in my approach. I mean, my daughter just said the other day, she goes, do you remember how you used to say that, you know, uh, that you were Santa Claus just because later on in life you didn't want to you us to say that you lied to us <laughs> you know? yeah you know but i would say it as a joke you know like yeah there's no santa claus like that like i was telling the truth you know by the way yeah. spoiler alert if you're out there and you still believe in Santa, <laughs> i apologize for this maybe, maybe, I, maybe i should have said <laughs> close your kids ears before i go on oh i just i right now there's a parent right now going don't now louie that was just wrong <laughs> Anyway, let me, I should have used that. Maybe you should, now I can't even say any of the bunnies or the the tooth fairies. Whatever. What I'm saying is, I told the truth, the truth, the truth. No matter if even if I did it with humor or if I did it a, a different way, I just felt like I had to just be as open and honest as possible. And there was something very cathartic happened in that process. What happened was I discovered uh, levels of vulnerability within me that were kind of interesting, you know, to the point where. Oh no, it was a sense of calm came over me. Trinity, I didn't know I suffered anxiety for as many years as I did until I no longer had it. And although I could identify with someone's anxiety, when I start talking about it or thinking about it, I'm going like, wait a minute, I don't even have that anymore. Right. Or 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 other uh, other things that were harmful, right? I, I didn't even know I was away from them until I, I look back and go like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't no longer tap my leg the way I always did. I no longer have to be fidgety like I was. I never walk around. I never have to just go, go, go anymore. I'm actually okay by myself now. I, how is that okay? I always had to be in a crowd and doing something and being, a, you know, the next thing. And I just thought that was part of who I am. And I know there's people out there that can relate with that. You're always on the go. You're always doing something. You're always. I had no idea that a lot of that was just the busyness that was between the ears that was going on. Because I didn't even know how to identify it. As a matter of fact, if you would have asked me about emotions, I remember just thinking, what, what emotion? Happy, mad. That's it. <laughs> that's the thing that I have. I'm either excited or I'm angry. <laughs> I don't know all those other little, you, you ever see that little thing with all the yes. faces? Yes. I don't even know what some of those are to be. Uh, look, I'm an educated man. I still don't know what bewildered is, really. I mean, really, I mean, I may fake an answer to you, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I, and, and I definitely don't know how to draw bewildered. No. I mean, there's like 30 little emojis on that chart. And I just know happy, 
and mad. I might understand the flirtatious one. That one I think I get. But you know, so there's 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 little tiny things that by re-experiencing life with children and with someone that you really care about and just being open and vulnerable to that, it just automatically started opening up another path that I'm so grateful that I took. Because I even though I'd already started changing, I don't think I would have stayed on this path had I number one not met Dana. And then had I not had children with Dana the way we had children, you know, I mean, I, I, I would have easily jumped onto the other path because there's issues in life. You don't always get along. You're going to argue. You're going to fight. And I remember in those early days when that would happen, I, boo, I just wanted to bang, bang, bang the world, man. It was like, ah, you know, <laughs> and then the more you don't do it, the more you're just like, where, where, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? With who? To who? If, if, if the same is the same is the same. And if you talk to enough people, you'll realize that you, we all got the same issues. We all got the same conversations. You know, we, we just, we just think that someone else is not having them. No, we're all having the same conversations. <laughs> we just all respond to them differently. You know what I mean? And sometimes we respond to them exactly the same. And it's, it's your choice. What do you want to do with this? This life is really short, man. I mean, today, look what we see today. Today we lost James Earl Jones, right? So, you know, the beef. Uh, you know, and so the, the life is short. And when you see that he was 93 years old, I'm thinking, wow. Wow, he's 93. He was 93. And then I think, oh, yeah, well, my dad's 84. My dad's 84 years old. Oh, wait, I'm 54. Oh, my God. Trini, tell me if I'm wrong about this, but do you not sometimes think like the little kid that's in you and be like, how the hell can I be this old? Because I could still <laughs> think. I could still think like the little kid. So how is it that I'm, does that mean that my father sometimes thinks like a little kid? Because when I look at him, I'm thinking, there ain't no way you think like a little kid, brother. You know, I mean, you were you were you were born old. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah. but but it is what that is. I mean, it's like we are forever young and we're always and we've always been old. Like well, all our lives, we have thought we're old. Right. No matter what you were two years old, you said, I'm two and a half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're trying to tell somebody that you're a half year older than you are. Yeah. But you've always been kind of young and you've always been kind of old. And the key is kind of finding that balance within you to just appreciate what's in front of you. But to know that, man, I can I can reinvent myself any day. If I really wanted to reinvent myself, I could. But if I don't heal Trinity, I just take the same person with me. I mean, I did that when I moved to L.A. When I moved to L.A., I was trying to reinvent myself, but I brought some of my boys with me, and I just started acting the same way. And next thing you know, I mean, the same Louis that was in El Paso was in L.A. Well, that's where the my first one, like the first one I said was delusion. I think yeah. that's that's an important one, right? Because, uh, I mean, how, how many, like there was a, um, I don't remember what I, I don't remember the exact context, but it was a couple of years ago now. I posted something on my social media. It was something about letting go. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the details. It was, it was basically like letting letting go, and somebody commented and said, "Only if it was only that easy," and and then I was like, "Wow! Like you really convince yourself that carrying all that stuff and dealing with it every day, day in and day out, is actually easier than letting it go." And that's the thing is is you know the, one of my favorite phrases that is universal apparently, no matter which group you're going into, uh, how's that working for you? Yeah. Right, like because we convince ourselves that it's working, right? We come up with all yeah. this elaborate narrative yeah. and, and all these justifications and why we're doing this and everything. You know, oh, well, how's it working? Well, you know, it stumps so many people because oftentimes when you really do sit back and objectively look at what's going on, right. yeah, it's not really working for you. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah, you're struggling. You know, it's, it's not working. So maybe you want to rethink that a little bit. You know, there was a there was a there was a guy I remember. uh never forget his name, Dr. Pete Butkins, the guy that I bought Quest Counseling from back in the day. Um, you know, he was uh, back in school to get his doctorate. And uh, I remember kind of being like, ain't you kind of old to be getting a doctorate? So I asked him, you know, because I had no filter back then. You think I don't have a filter now? You should have met me younger. I really had no filter. Yeah, I hear that. And so I asked him about that, you know, like how at 40-something years old he was going back and get his doctorate. And he was like, uh, well, I'm going to do time anyway. Like time is going to pass anyway. So who cares how long it takes? And, and that always stuck with me, man, because it was like, man, I always lived to die back then. 
even at that age, as healthy as I felt like I was, I was still just living to, to expire. You know, I was just, you know, always thinking about the negative, you know, the end, the end, the end, you know, like that old Jim Morrison thing. This is the end. <laughs> and my friend, I mean, I really related to Jim Morrison in all those early years when, when I would hear that music, because I always felt like that. I always felt like I was predestined to die young and horrifically. And when he said that, it was like, but what if you don't? <laughs> yeah. Well, then no matter how long something takes, so what? Just even if you just take one little step to the left off the path that you're on and just every year you just take one more step to the left from the path you're on. Do you know that in a decade you'd be on a completely different path in 10 years mm -hmm. with just one step a year? So it doesn't take that much movement in today to get somewhere different. But I think that's what makes it feel so monumental Trinity is because when you think about change, you think about how am I going to go from smoking pot every day to just not smoking at all? Or how am I going to go from, you know, drinking with my boys on the weekends to just not even hanging out with them? Like you, you think in these extremes because we always talk in extremes. You gotta, you gotta stop now. You gotta quit. You gotta do it. <laughs> but, but if you're not accepting the quit word, if you're not accepting the fact that you need to go to some sort of treatment and discontinue it completely, well, then how about proving yourself right? Because I know you've been thinking, I just need to cut down. Well, then make those real attempts and at least stick to that attempt to the degree where if it doesn't work, then you absolutely know that slowing down is not for you because the illness or the sickness is inside you and therefore will not allow you to do so, but at least make the movement instead of you do it for a couple of days, you go back to the way it was. So you don't try again until the next crisis. Cause that's kind of the way we do what we do, right? Like you, your, your, your bouts of recovery kind of mimic your arrests. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get arrested. Let's get sober again. You get, you get kicked out. Let's get sober again. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like that person that doesn't pray until they're in a crisis. Right. Like, I swear I'll never do this again. If you just do this, you know, two weeks well, later to do the exact same thing. I prayed every time I threw up. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's when I did it. But that's literally how I found spirituality though. Okay. Like I was in a really rough spot in my life and it was just like, I just didn't like where I was at. And, uh, when I first, uh, it was, you know, I was not only an atheist, but I was anti-theist. So I was actively. <laughs> Wait, well, what? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was. words again, Trinity. I was actively against religion. So it, it wasn't one of those things where I just, I'm not, I'm a non-believer. Who cares? Right. No, no, no. I was actively like against religion. Like I thought it was a, it was a terrible thing. Um, okay. And so when somebody brought up spirituality, I was like, ah, whatever. It just, it never really came into my, my orbit. Right. Um, until, you know, until I had my moment. When I looked around, I was like, dude, I, I got to have something better. Like, this sucks, right. man. And then when I stumbled across uh, Buddhism as a spiritual belief, mm. um, I thought it was BS. Like, I, didn't, I was like, this is stupid. It's like, but I'm so hard-headed. <laughs> I can't tell you something doesn't work if I didn't try it. Because then I would know in my head I didn't try it. And so anybody that would say, well, you didn't try Like, I would know they, uh, they got me on that one. Right. So I'm so hard headed that I was like, no, I, I'm going to, I'm going to prove it wrong. I'm going to go ahead and commit to it. And I'm going to go through the actions. I'm going to fully do this right? just so I can turn around and prove to y'all it doesn't work. Right. And so I started to do it. I was like, this is stupid. It just doesn't work. And <laughs> at first experiment. Yeah. And at first I didn't agree with like half the stuff. I was like, but whatever, man, let me, let me go ahead and do the stupid thing so I can tell people right. I did it. Right. Um, Fake it, you make it, Trinity. Yeah. And then the weirdest thing is it, like, it started to work. <laughs> <laughs> like I still believed some of the thoughts that I believed, but they didn't matter anymore. If that makes sense. Like people would irritate me and frustrate me and I didn't like certain situations. Um, and so when I started, th you know, implementing this philosophical change, I still didn't like those people. I still thought that they were wrong or whatever, but I was okay with it. Like I was at peace with it. It didn't really affect me anymore. And that's how it started. And I was like, well, like, so I look back and it was like a couple months into it. I'm like, you know, something's happening. Here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm just going through these stupid motions that I don't agree with, but it's kind of working. Like I'm not as frustrated or as upset anymore. Like I still think logically about those that are the same, 
but the internal piece is different than it was. Hmm. And so then I dove deeper into it. And then some of the other things like the compassion started to make more sense, you know, uh, after I was kind of like knee deep in it. Uh, but yeah, that's literally how I found it. I was too stubborn to say it didn't work without trying it. So I was going to prove it wrong. And well, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's the reason why it's been around for thousands of years. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, see, I think faith is that way. I think faith is one of those things that you sh- that, that everyone should challenge. Sure. You know, it's not going to hurt you to challenge it because faith gets it. And and all the main players of whatever faith you're in or whatever belief you're in or whatever philosophical path you're on, the, the leadership within that or the people that have been in it, they'll, they'll get it. They'll understand your challenge because they probably <laughs> challenged it yeah. themselves, which is probably why they're major players in that belief system in the first place. Because sometimes it takes the, the, the biggest violators to become the biggest proponents of it. Yeah. Right. You know, and I, and I think sometimes that, that that's hard for some of us to accept. I mean, you and I, uh, we, we share a, a, a friend that was famously uh, destructive. And, and now he travels the world preaching. Mm-hmm. And some people would look at that, especially early on, and be like, man, come on, man. Seriously, I know you, dog. <laughs> you know, I know who you are, right? Sure. Uh, but do you? I mean, you know who, who he was. Yeah. I mean, you you knew, you know who he was. Uh, and I'm going to say pretending to be. Because the you of birth is not the same way that everybody knows you. Right. I mean, if, just think about the you of birth, Trinity. The me of at birth. There is no way the me at birth could do the things that I did. Things had to occur. Yeah. Things had to happen for us to be okay with some of those scenarios. And I know this because when you see some of those things happen to other people and the way they respond to that, I'm thinking, Man, why didn't I respond like that? I mean, I was younger than that, and I was okay with that. Why, like, it's not like there's a screw loose. It's not like there's something missing. It's called that's your response to the traumatic event, right? I'm conditioned a certain way. You're conditioned a certain way. And when you get conditioned a certain way, it's for the lifestyle that you have to survive because at the end of the day, we are all survivalists. That is what is innate in all of us. We are all gonna survive no matter what there there look you look around you anybody that's walking around living they've survived a lot of tragedy because there's there's death all around you as a child i mean it, if you don't believe me baby proof a house and you'll see right i i look <laughs> at a, a baby proof house and i said well that wasn't like that when i was a kid i mean you you'd fall on tile okay get, get, you know what i mean no we baby proof coffee houses tables. when we were children <laughs> How many people yeah. have scars from coffee table? I do. I do. I have a scar from coffee table because my yeah. brother put me into it. But, you know, the, but, you know, the, the world wasn't baby proofed. And little by little, we're baby proofing more and more and more. And, and I like this not to take it to a, a, that kind of philosophical way. It's just to say that it's constantly moving in the direction where it needs to be for the next generation. That's all. And for the you of the next generation. I'm going to give an example, Trinity. When you watch your mom, with your children, you know, dang, well, that is not the mom that raised you. <laughs> I get, I right? get trouble for pointing that out all the time. That is not the same. Mom. No, no, no. I tell my no. kids all the time. So that is not the mom no. that I have. You have a grandma. No, not even close. No. And a matter of fact, uh, fellas and felines out there, children, if you are the same grandparent that you were as a parent, What's wrong with you? Yeah, you didn't evolve at all, man. What's what's what what is wrong with you? Yeah, because that is not normal. The more normal thing is, is it? It's like the 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 parent looks at the grandparents and says, "Oh no, if I would have done that, really, you're gonna get away with it? You're gonna let them get away with that? That's okay with you now? All of a sudden." And yeah. so here here I'm now in that situation, and I'm and I'm and I'm going, "Wow, I just became a grandfather," as as grown as I feel, as old as I feel, as evolved as I may feel, there is a whole next level of evolution I am embarking upon that I have no clue 
what's ahead, nor am I willing or trying to control it. Because what I know is the things that I try to hold on to and control, I screw up, <laughs> right? I, mm-hmm. I'm not, not really good at that stuff. But when I let go, like you said, and I just kind of like keep walking down that path, keep walking down that path. Woo. I'm always when I get on the other side, I'm always like, oh, yeah, this is really what I wanted. But I didn't know I, I didn't know how to say it then because I didn't know this is what I wanted. I didn't know it was going to feel this good. I thought it was going to feel better if I had this. If I had this. You know, it always feels so good when you let go and just walk that path. And so whatever you're experiencing, we, we, we got to start closing up. So whatever you're experiencing out there, whatever you're 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 going through. It doesn't and will not stay the way it is unless you absolutely make it stay the way it is. Because even if it's bad, it will get worse because it's never going to stay the way it is. It will evolve into a worsened position. You know, like what Trinity likes to say when we're talking football. We talked about the Dallas game last night and I, and I asked him, you know, about, and I told him that the Browns just did not look good. And he goes, well, the Browns are exactly who the Browns have always been. And the Cowboys will be who I know them to always be. And I'm thinking people are like that. If someone is hurting you right now, if someone is not doing good by you right now, they're going, they've already shown you who they are. That's not changing. Somebody tells you who they are, believe them. And guess what? You're showing yourself who you are. You're a person that feels that you deserve that kind of pain, that you deserve that kind of treatment, and that you should stay in this negative situation. And that's the kind of thing that I'm hoping or hoping to inspire you to get out of and make a change and get on a different path. Trinity, can you give us some closing thoughts, please? Um, yeah, it's just, it's never too late, man. Right. Like, uh, uh, you know, we could sit back and, and dream about what could be, you know, what could happen, what could this, um, but it can be now, like it doesn't have to be, there's no, why not? Right. Like we come up with all these excuses, but what if you're wrong? What if there is a better way out there? What if, you know, what if it's not that hard? What if it does succeed? You know, why not? Why not you? Why not now? And with that, we're going to send it back to Shaw at WOKB Studios, 1680 on AM, 100.7 FM. And Trinity, what is all the social media? Excuse me. Let me follow it. Let's do it later. Look at that. It had to come up. Trinity, it had to come up. You can always check us out on any of the social medias under Dope and Dharma or any of your major podcasting platforms, also under Dope and Dharma. And with that, we'll see you next time, people. Adios, amigos. It's time for a taco. Goodbye.